Okay, it looks like we're live. Yep, okay, it looks like we're live. Perfect. All right, perfect. It looks like we are live. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me in the chat. Hopefully it's working a-okay. For anybody that is in the chat, hopefully this works out perfectly. This is my first time doing a live stream, so welcome, guys. What's up, guys? My name is Kai. I am the Nerd of Strength, and welcome to the channel. So I'm doing a live stream of day two of the 2020 World's Strongest Man, and I just want to reiterate for anybody curious, I am not affiliated with World's Strongest Man. I am not affiliated with IMG. This is just a fan channel. This is just something I do out of love of the sport. But yeah, it's something different for me, and I thought, why not give it a go? Also, frankly, because I didn't feel like editing a recap video last night because results came pretty late in the night. And uh, I was working pretty late last night at my actual job. So, yeah, I didn't have time to do this. But I wanted to give a live stream a go and um, see what was happening. So I have all the information for what happened yesterday during day two. And we're going to run down what happened in all the groups. So first off, we have group one, which was Luke Richardson, Robert Obers, Gabriel Pena, Pa O'Dwyer and Jerry Pritchett. Then we had group two, which is Adam Bishop, Evan Singleton, Mikhail Shivnikov, Kevin Ferris, and Mark Felix. Group three, Tom Stoltman, Alexei Novikov, Trey Mitchell, Gavin Bilton, and Maxime Boudreau. Group four, we had J.F. Caron, Graham Hicks, Irving Toots, I Thor Melstad and Bobby Thompson. And finally, we had group five Brian Shaw, Luke Stoltman, Ivar Schmock Stellis, Terry Hollins, and Nick Best. So I'm getting all of these graphics from the World's Strongest Man chat. Um, well, not the chat, but the, the Facebook live streams that they've been doing on that they've been doing on uh, Facebook that's paid, that's $2, but I'm not gonna show any video from that event because it just paid and you know I'm not trying to get in trouble with anybody, but I did take screen grabs of the nice events uh, results that they had, that they had for the, the first event of the day, which was the loading medley. And I see the first comment, which is from Marcus L. What's up, Marcus? Um, is anyone here just refreshing the spreadsheet? Does anyone have any quicker results notifications? Yes, I'm constantly refreshing uh, the spreadsheet that was made by Reddit user Esum. Always give credit. Esum is great at keeping up with the, um, the, the spreadsheets, but it's been very hard to get results because there are no live spectators. So I've just been refreshing the Reddit. I've been refreshing the spreadsheet. I've been refreshing Facebook and Instagram, but it's all we have. It's it's unfortunate, but that's what we have to do. As far as I know so far for uh, the first day of the finals, they've only done the first event, which is the loading race. They haven't started the second event yet, but we'll get to that later in the stream. So first up, going back to day two, the second day of the qualifying heats, we have event three, which was the loading medley. For group one, Luke Richardson won that event with a time of five objects in 46 seconds, point 30. Then second was Pa with 48.99, Robert Oberst with five in 54.96, and surprisingly, Jerry Pritchett in fourth with 57.37. And the reason why there is only four guys on this list and Gabriel Pena is not listed here is because he had to withdraw from the competition. Unfortunately, Gabriel had to be taken to the hospital due to an, an AFib heart problem. And as he stated in his blog, he wasn't 
rushed to the hospital. You know, he, he wasn't strapped to a gurney or anything. As he said, he walked into the ambulance and was taken to the hospital. So he's fine. He's talking. Um, but yeah, he had to withdraw, unfortunately, and I do wish him the best. And I hope to see him return to World's Strongest Man in 2021. So yeah, Group One only has four competitors. Only had ended up going to four competitors. I do have some pictures from Rogue from Facebook that I've been seeing, and it actually looks very cool. You know, yes, the event was held indoors for both uh, days of the heats, but it is what it is. They've had it. The, you know, the show must go on, so it is what it is. There. I was a bit surprised that Jerry came in last uh, with the loading race, but at this point he had a pretty solid lead over everybody else in his heat. So that's them carrying the, the engine block and part of the hubcaps. Yeah. Going on to group two for the loading medley, Kevin Ferris won his group with a time of 42.94 seconds carrying five objects. Then Adam Bishop in second with 44.81. Evan Singleton with 46.47. Mikhail Shivlikov with 51.18. And Mark Felix in fourth place with only four objects in a time of 41.28. For Heat 2, I'm actually really shocked that Mark fumbled on it, but at the same time, a bit not surprised. I remember World's Strongest Man 2007, where he just completely fumbled on the loading race. So it is a bit infuriating, but, you know, it is what it is. Still love you, Mark, but he definitely dropped a significant lead when he did that. And as you can see, these items are huge. I don't know cars. I don't know monster truck parts, but these parts look insane, especially in somebody like Kevin Ferris in his arms. I think he's one of the smaller guys, but he is 6'2", but that piece looks crazy. Yeah. To group three for the loading medley. Tom Stoltman came in first with a time of 39.11 seconds. Second was Maxime Boudreaux with 42.57. Oleksii Novikov came in third with 44.40. Trey Mitchell in fourth place with 54.16. And Gavin Bilton. Uh oh. Is not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth stream. Uh oh. Let me know if the stream is okay, guys. This is my first time doing this. So uh, let me know if many things are, are having your problems. I am reading the, the live chat as it comes through as well. But yeah, Gavin Bilton came in fifth place with only four objects in a time of one minute, nine seconds, point one seven. Again, look at these giant items. These are crazy. Trey with the hubcap. Gavin with the hubcap as well. Interesting, interesting to note that um, Gavin is also on the injured list, but he did power through and complete all four of the events for the day. Um, I believe Gavin actually hurt his ribs during the squad event in day one, but and I thought he was out of the competition, but he did power through and go on to uh, continue for day two. There he is with the engine block. It is also um, interesting to note that Gavin is listed as the heaviest competitor in this whole competition. He's even heavier than Brian Shaw. So to see the engine block in his hands, it's not, you know, it looks like it's plastic. It looks like a toy. But I believe during the uh, backstage panels that they showed on Facebook, I think the engine is the lightest object and it weighs, I think, 205 pounds, I believe. Moving on. Uh, moving on to group four for the loading medley, J.F. Karan won with a time of 47.13 seconds. Second was I. Thor Melstad at a time of 52.1 seconds. Third was Bobby Thompson at 40, I'm sorry, at 53.06 seconds. And in fourth was Graham Hicks at 56.35 seconds. 
Now in this group, the reason why there are only four competitors here is because on day one, Irving Toos had to pull out Dorn, pull out of the competition due to a torn quad. I believe actually coming into the competition, he also had a bit of a problem with his ACL, so it's unfortunate to see that happen. Uh, he's somebody else who I hope to see again at World Strongest Man. I mean, he also was representing S. He's only one of two competitors that was representing the SCL brand, so I hope he makes a return. He was also third at Europe's Strongest Man this year. Uh, as I stated in my day one preview, I didn't think Graham was going to do too well at the loading. Graham is a bit shorter, so and he has shorter arms, so I imagine this was much harder for him to do. But look at that giant piece in his arms. Same with Ithor. Yeah. As the day went on, there were uh, less pictures with the heats, but I'm getting this all from Facebook, so bear with me. And finally, we have group five for the loading medley. Ivar Schmock Stellis came in first with a time of 40.50 seconds. Second was Luke Stoltman with 42.31. Third was Terry Hollins with 52.68. Fourth place was Brian Shaw with 54.21. And last was Nick Bess with four objects in a time of one minute. 21 seconds point 88 now as i stated in my day one preview video i told you guys not to sleep on ivar smock stellis and you guys will see later on why that is i told you scl is made up of like lifting and loading like weird objects so i there was no doubt in my mind that ivar's was going to win this event it's nice to see that Luke came in second on that, but surprisingly, Brian Shaw, or I guess not surprisingly, Brian Shaw is in fourth place. Now, I'm not one of those people who say, oh, Brian Shaw is finished or Brian Shaw is done. It's just that, you know, with time and with age, you just get slower. Whether Brian loses weight, gains weight, or what have you, I don't think Brian's speed is going to improve. That's, it just is what it is. Time catches up to all of us. So, you know, that's a, that's a bit unfortunate that that was fourth um, in his heat, but, you know, it is what it is. And as we talk about uh, day one of the finals, you'll see why. Like, Brian's speed just isn't there. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say, but I don't think he's finished. You know, I'm not one of those people he does bad in one event. And I'm going to be like, oh, Brian Shaw, is, it, you know, is done. No, absolutely not. It's just his speed's not there. And the only picture we have for Heat 5 is Luke trying to load this giant cylinder thing, which looks crazy big. Brian needs heavier events to do well. The heavier person will never be the fastest. Exactly. The, the, I definitely agree with that. Moving on to the event four, which two groups did the overhead log and three groups did the uh, double dumbbells overhead. Um, for group one, they did the overhead log press. So for that, we have Jerry Pritchett with nine reps, Luke Richardson with eight, Robert Ober is also with eight, and Pa O'Dwyer with five. Now, I actually pegged Robert to do a bit better on this, honestly. I thought this was his event. I thought he was going to place first, but Jerry is also a phenomenal log presser, and that definitely helped cement his spot to the finals this year, so good job for Jerry. Glad to see Jerry Pritchard back in the finals since 2015. I believe this is Luke Richardson here in this picture. I'm not sure. I think so. I hope I put those in the right order, but yeah. The American Monster showing, showing off. Jerry Pritchard with the log. Yeah. Um... 
I don't have the weights for the log, unfortunately. They didn't list them, which is a bit annoying. Um, let me know in the chat if you guys are also watching the Facebook live stream. That's the, the $2 stream. Um, for, for what it is, it's fine, but it could be a lot better, honestly. But that's where I'm getting most of my information from. And also doing the overhead log press was group four. Graham Hicks won his group with nine lifts. I Thor Melstad did six. And both Bobby Thompson and JF Caron strategically only did one rep each. One point for JF secured his spot into the finals, which means this is the first time he didn't have to do the last man standing stone off event. So good for him. And as Bobby stated on his Insta, you know, he was strategically doing this to save energy for the stone off. He only needed one lift to get his second place in his group. Oh yeah, I definitely agree, Marcus. Jerry destroyed the log. I just wish we can see it, but no live footage, no nothing. I want to say there's a bit of live footage, but I'm not going to name the the YouTube channel that has it in case certain prying eyes are watching this. But if you look on YouTube, you can see a bit of behind the scenes footage. Uh, definitely follow all of the strongmen on Instagram. Um, some of them have footage on their on their Insta stories, but yeah, it, it's a shame that we can't see any footage or anything. But you know, we have TikTok videos of them dan dancing and singing the songs. Boy, 2020, what a year we live in, right? Moving on, this is where things get a bit tricky. Groups two three and five all did the double dumbbell press instead of the log press now i don't have like these nice graphs like groups one and four have because at this point in the live stream um they didn't have the results yeah i know shocking the the quote unquote professional facebook live stream that worlds put on did not have the results they were not done with the event so there's no official score sheets for the next three groups, but I do have the, the, the listings though. I do have to reference the, um, sorry about that. Give me a sec. I do have to reference the spreadsheet. Also, once again, made by Reddit user eSum. Definitely confidently check back there for updates. So for heat two, for the double dumbbell press, Kevin Ferris did five reps. Then Adam Bishop did, hold on one second. Sorry about that. Then Adam Bishop did three reps. Mikhail Shivlikov did six reps. Evan Singleton did five reps. And Mark Felix did two reps. Um, you know what? I was I will admit that I was completely wrong about Kevin Ferris. I didn't necessarily write him off, but I didn't know much about Kevin Ferris before going into this video. So he's definitely got a follow from me. Um, he's been impressing me so far with, you know, what we can see from the spreadsheet because, again, there's no video. But he's been impressing me so far. Um, I'm actually surprised Evan didn't do a bit better in the dumbbell press because that's one of his better events but at, at this point i guess he was injured from the loading race so maybe that's why five still good five would have been good in a different heat but in this heat with great pressers it wasn't enough but he did he was you know supposed to be in the uh the the atlas stones but we'll talk about that in a bit and you know what I'll give it up to Mark Felix. He got two reps on this event. I actually said he was going to get zero because last year, 2019, he zeroed the dumbbells completely. So, you know, I thought he was going to zero this year too, but he didn't. So, good, good for you, Mark. Going into Heat 3, who also did the double dumbbell press, Alexei Novikov did eight reps. Tom Stoltman did four reps. Maxime Boudreau did three reps. 
Trey Mitchell also did three reps, and the same with Gavin Bilson. Oops, sorry, that Shivakov one is out of order. As you see, Trey there trying to uh, get the double dumbbells up. Tom with it. I wonder if Tom Viper pressed it or not, because I know in the Stoltman's vlog video they were talking about, you know, vipering them up or not. Probably not. That's those aren't the lightest pair. I believe the lightest pair for the double dumbbells was 110 pounds. Novikov beasting it out. I am a bit surprised that Bujo only got three reps. I thought he would have placed second in that, but good on Tom Stoltman. And then finally, we have Heat 5, the group of death, as many said. Ryan Shaw definitely woke up in turn on his beast mode, and he scored nine reps. And then in second place was Ivar Smokstelis with three. And then Terry Hollins. Oop, that's actually out of order on the spreadsheet, so I apologize. So in first for the double dumbbell press for Heat 5, Brian Shaw scored nine reps. Then in second would be Luke Stoltman with four reps. Third is Ivar Smok Stellis with three reps. Fourth is Terry Hollins with one rep. And then in fifth was Nick Best with zero reps. Now, we talked about how Ivar's is great at dumbbell press, Luke's great at dumbbell press, Brian's great at dumbbell press. So the reason why Ivar's only did three, if you guys were wondering, was because he got to go last on the dumbbell press because he won the previous event. So went to the previous event, get the good graces of going last in the next event. He saw Brian do nine, probably figured he wasn't going to beat that or didn't have to beat that, so... He did what he had to do to get into the Atlas Stone shoot-off, which was his three reps. But I definitely feel bad for Luke Stoltman, you know? Like, he, he tried his hardest. It's just, he just wasn't in, it just wasn't in the cards for him this year, which is super unfortunate. I don't know if there was a mental block or something, but um, he gave it his all. He, did, he definitely did, but he didn't have enough points to make it to the Atlas Stones at the end. Uh, this will be a wake-up call for him. Uh, he's definitely going to come back better and stronger than ever before next year, and I can't wait to see what he brings to the table next year for Luke. Same with Terry. Terry did phenomenal um, at most of the events, except for the dumbbell press. We knew he wasn't going to do that well. That That's just what it is. We all know Ter uh, dumbbell press is not Terry's best event, but he did get into the Atlas Stone shoot-off. I keep saying shoot off. I apologize. Um, they did actually change it. So it wasn't a last man standing Atlas Stone like it was for uh, for 2019 where it was um, second and third place just dropping the stone back and forth. They actually did a series of Atlas Stones instead. It was a series of eight la Atlas Stones, I believe, ranging from 110 kilos to 200 kilos. Who had some bad luck, needed to do better on the log and squat. Not, Yeah, I absolutely agree. Those weren't um, Luke's best events. He just got, you know, a bad pick. Bad pick in the heats. Excuse me. Yeah, um, going back to the Atlas Stones, though. So, yeah, they didn't do last man standing. Probably, probably because they... Um, did the heats indoors at the Bradenton Convention Center. They probably had to save the floors, and I imagine dropping Atlas Stones on Convention Center ground would, you know, destroy it. So they, um, so they said so they decided to do an eight series, and sorry, a series of eight stones instead, which I like better. Um, it wasn't head to head though. So third had the distinction of going first in the Atlas Stone series and then second went after. So that was a bit different, um, but as World's Strongest Man, nothing is ever planned out. That's, that's just the name of the game when it comes to World. I went to Worlds last year and things would just change on the fly. So 
it's, it's what you come to expect with worlds. I wish it was better, but you know, it is what it is. Sorry, this is a bit sporadic, guys. Uh, again, I'm going, referencing the uh, the the live, the Facebook stream, Facebook and Reddit, but I am trying to do as much as I can. And I'm, for this one, sorry about that, I'm going to reference the, the Reddit so you guys can see that. So for the Atlas Stone shoot-off, Jerry Pritchard got to go in first. So he, Jerry Pritchard won his group overall with 17 points. Luke Richardson and Robert Oberst were in the Atlas Stone series together. Richardson beat Robert Oberst. Richardson did five Atlas Stones in 47.56 seconds, and Robert Oberst did four in 63.70 seconds. In group two, Kevin Ferris won his group overall, and then Adam Bishop and Mikhail Shivlikov went into the Atlas Stones together. Now, originally, Evan Singleton was supposed to go into the Atlas Stones because he had tied with Mikhail Shivlikov at 13 points. However, he tore his bicep during the loading race and had to withdraw before the Atlas Stones. And I know some people on Reddit don't necessarily like that that happened. They think that Mikhail should have gone into the finals by virtue alone. But, and they're kind of like talking about how like what happened with Trey and Alexi last year. And I don't think, um, you know, the hate is warranted necessarily. I'm sorry, not with Trey and Alexi. What happened with JF and Kevin Ferris last year? So if you guys remember, JF and Kevin Ferris had to do the Atlas Stone shoot off in 2019. And... Kevin Ferris brought the wrong tacky and couldn't get the Atlas Stone up. He couldn't do one rep. So instead of JF automatically going to the finals, they had the fourth place, which was Oli Martin Christensen, come out and do the Atlas Stones with JF. And I definitely disagreed with that last year. Kevin was the third place. He couldn't do a rep. JF should have gone. But this year... Evan didn't make it to the Atlas Stones. He withdrew before that event even took place. So I think it is fair to let Bishop do the Atlas Stones. I mean, I definitely feel for Mikhail, though. I would have loved to see Shiv back in the finals, especially with an 18-inch deadlift, but it is what it is. That's strong, man. So Adam Bishop won the Atlas Stones by doing six in 53.04 seconds, and Mikhail did five in 34.19 seconds. Moving on to Heat 3, Alexei Novikov won his group overall, and then Tom Stoltman and Maxime Boudreau went into the Atlas Stones. Tom was the only one to do all eight Atlas Stones, and he did them in a time of 39 seconds flat. And Maxime did seven in 38.30 seconds, which in a different heat, Maxime definitely would have gone to the finals, and I feel for him. But again, he's somebody who I think we will definitely see at the next couple of years of World's Strongest Man. Uh, Maxime's a beast on Atlas Stones. Like, if you guys watch, like, Canada's Strongest Man, he usually does really well at the Atlas Stones. And, in fact, um, for anybody who, who wants to watch more of Maxime's competitions, you can actually watch the last three years of Canada's Strongest Man on YouTube. Um, if you look, Cine Media TV on YouTube, they uploaded all of the heats and the finals of Canada's Strongest Man for 2017, 18, and 19. That's where I get some of my video clips from. Um, so definitely give that a check. Uh, the only thing I will say, they are not in English. They are in French. But, you know, I don't think you're missing out too much. But that is just a heads up for you guys. Anyway, moving on to Heat 4. JF Karan won his group overall, which is great. Uh, finally, JF didn't have to do the Last Man Standing Stones, which, you know, has, has definitely, I feel like, has... Not necessarily hampered him in the past couple of years, but I definitely think holds him back because he has had to waste a lot of energy 
during the, uh, the Atlas Stones. Going back to 2017, when they first did the Last Man Standing Atlas Stones, JF went against Mateusz, Bel uh, Mateusz Belshek, where I believe like Belshek did like 17 reps. And, you know, JF had to go against him, another excellent stone lifter. Um, then he had to do the, uh, the Last Man Standings in 2018 against Mark Felix. And last year, again, I believe he did get screwed over a bit by having to face two competitors in the Last Man Standing Atlas Stones. But this year, he didn't. He's going to be fresh for the finals. And, you know, I have big hopes for JF this year going into the finals. And I'll tell you guys right now, if JF wins the finals, I'm going to get a Canadian flag for my office. I will fly it proudly. <laughs> Uh, Canadian grip's definitely gonna, you know, show out this year. But yeah, going into the Atlas Stones for Heat 4, Graham Hicks got 6 in 50.34 seconds, and Bobby Thompson did 5 in 75.09 seconds. I definitely feel for Bobby, he's another guy who, in a different heat, definitely could have won and gotten into the finals, but this is good experience for him. Uh, once again, another guy who we definitely will see more of at Worlds in the couple of years. Bobby is a beast. Bobby was a bit injured, but again, a different heat, he could have won. But he has been very humble and gracious about his defeat. And, you know, it's a lesson. He, he You know, it's definitely experience, so that's good. You guys have Brian winning. I could definitely see Brian winning. Brian is in my top three. Um, uh, but I actually have JF first, Tom in second, and Brian in third. Mark, do you think Brian's going to win the, the log ladder? Ooh, with Hicks out. Spoiler alert, Hicks is out of the finals, by the way. But um, JF is a bit faster when it comes to log ladder, so... And I think guys like Jerry could, Jerry and Tom can definitely get in between there. But yeah, um, let, let's just finish doing the, the, the stones and then we'll talk about the finals. So finally, for Heat 5, Brian Shaw turned it on at the end. Uh, he won his group overall with 15 and a half points, which means Ivar Smok Stellis and Terry Hollins went into the Atlas Stones. Ivar's completed seven stones in 39.57 seconds, and Terry Holland's only completed six in 33.43 seconds. I definitely feel for Terry. This could have been Terry's 10th final, and I do like Big Tell, but I'm super excited to see Ivar's in the finals. What did I tell you guys last night? You guys should watch out for Ivar's. Do I think he's going to get top six? No, not necessarily, but Ivar's is is somebody who, you know, I think he's the best kept secret in Strongman. I think he's very underrated. He is the current SCL world champion. Um, I think he could definitely win the SCL championship this year for 2020, which I believe is going to happen at the end of the month or in December. But yeah, I think uh, Ivar is very underrated. He has the Latvian Atlas Stone record. He also holds the Latvian log lift record as well. Somebody to definitely uh, keep a lookout on. And uh, check out Strongman Champions League. Strongman Champions League also has their own streaming service, which I believe is 7 bucks a month. But they're the only ones who have been like consistently posting Strongman competitions in the past couple of months during the pandemic. Um, it's mostly Eastern European guys where the restrictions are a bit laxer. So if you guys do want to watch some competitions, go get the... Uh, Strongman Champions League streaming service. Okay, but yeah, so that's the end of the heat. So we have our 10 finalists. I'm sorry if it seems like I'm just rambling a bit, but again, this is just a live stream and this is something different for the channel. So we have Ivar Smok Stellis, JF Caron, Brian Shaw, Luke Richardson, Jerry Pritchett, Tom Stoltman, Alexei Novikov, Graham Hicks, and Adam Bishop. Oh, sorry, and Kevin Ferris as well. 
So yeah, those are your 10 finalists of 2020. Um, definitely a, a interesting year. You know, a lot of people were talking before worlds that, oh, whoever wins worlds going to have an asterisk next to their name or it doesn't count. I don't believe that. This field was just as strong as any other year. Yes, the top three podium from 2019 didn't show up, but there's still a lot of strong, hungry guys out there. And they did show out. They, they definitely did show out. You know, we got to see a lot of new faces, which is the one thing I do like about Worlds, is we get to have a bit of a spotlight on guys we normally wouldn't see or normally don't know about. Like, again, I didn't know much about Kevin Ferris going into this or Gabriel Peno, but, you know, I get to learn about these guys. So I'm super excited to, to see Ferris in the finals. Basic animation. If out of competition shape, Eddie joined the finals right now, where would you put him? With the events we have, where would I put Eddie? I could still see Eddie in the top five, but Eddie's speed was terrible. Actually, how was Eddie's grip? I'm not sure how Eddie's grip was. Hmm. Eddie was terrible in the keg toss, though. Eddie, Eddie would not have been the he would have been in the bottom half for the Giants medley, uh, maybe mid pack on Hercules hold, and probably bottom half for the keg toss. So, eh, I don't know, but yeah, definitely in the top five at least. Sorry, I'm just reading the comments as they come in. The first two events. So yeah, going into the finals. Um, as of right now, uh. I believe they finished up the first event, which was, they called it the Giants Medley. So it changed a bit. What it was was a 275 pound anvil into a motorbike yoke. Uh, do we have, yep, 125 kilo anvil carry, 500 kilo yoke carry, okay. So we do have the results for that. Um, things are a bit sporadic, but it looks like Adam Bishop came in first in that. We don't have times, unfortunately, but we do have placings. So Adam Bishop in first, Alexei Novikov in second, Jerry Pritchett in third, Kevin Ferris in fourth, Tom Stoltman in fifth, Jeff Caron in sixth, Brian Shaw in seventh, Ivar Smokstelis in eighth, Luke Richardson in ninth, and Graham Hicks in tenth. But Graham Hicks have had to pull out of the competition due to a torn bicep, which is terrible. Like, Worlds are just taking out everybody's biceps, man. Um, not sure how he heard it, but, you know, if I was betting money on it, I'd probably say it was during the anvil carry. That anvil is, like, always a tricky thing to pick up. Like, if you remember two years ago, remember Martins dropped the anvil, and even last year Thor fumbled the anvil, so... If I were a betting person, I'd say Hicks probably hurt himself on the anvil. So he had to withdraw, which which really does suck because this is Graham's first final. And I was curious to see how he's going to do on the log ladder, but it's just shame. So we only have nine competitors at the moment. Mark says that's, that's a good placing for Tom. Yeah, Tom's yoke um, in the past, going back to Giants Live, hasn't been the most spectacular. It's been mid-pack, so that is actually very good for, for Tom. i say it's actually good placing for uh, JF as well. He's one above Brian. So think about that. Last year during the finals, in the first event, Thor was only slightly faster than, than Brian. And I think they were 6th uh, and 7th respectively on that one. That's actually very good for Adam Bishop, too. From somebody who didn't do well in his heat, that's a spectacular start for him. Not surprising with Alexi, but holy shit, that's a really good placing for Jerry at the beginning. And I think Jerry has great events in the finals. What do you guys think Jerry's going to place overall? I'd say he'd place fourth. I don't know if they've started the next event yet. However, let's see. World's Strongest Man just posted on Instagram, so let's see what they're doing. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like the, the deadlift is supposed to be next, but I'm not sure if they've started or not. That's just that's just how Worlds is, taking forever. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm not finding anything if they've... Does anybody know if they've started the deadlift? Yes. Jody, Jerry may podium. Jerry could podium. I could see that. How's Jerry with keg toss? Does anybody know how Jerry is with keg toss? It's been, it's been a while. Uh, the last thing I saw Jerry do the keg toss was Santa Monica and that Brazilian, like, Forza Bruta thing that they did last summer. Um, I think it was, like, pretty mid-pack on that. No clue if the deadlift started yet or not. Hmm. Somebody on Reddit said it's currently taking place, but no results just yet. You know, I've gotten some DMs on Insta about things taking place, but right now I don't have anything on the uh, dumbbell press. So I'm not, sorry, not dumbbell press, on the deadlift. So no results just yet. Fun fact, though, the, uh, the deadlift is actually using the old school IPSA setup. So that's kind of neat. Uh, they said they were flown in from Odd Haugen's gym, the training halls. Um, he did still have a lot of the old IPSA equipment, so those giant wagon wheels are from the from IPSA like 10, 12 years ago. And um, if you guys just want some things to know about the channel, um, video-wise, after World's Strongest Man, uh, I did say this before I went on hiatus that I was going to do a history of IPSA video. I'm still doing that. Um, there's still a lot of uh, information that I learned after I thought the video was done, so I went back and redid it, as well as working on getting a lot of footage of older IFSA competitions that just weren't, um, you know, dubbed in English, unfortunately. A lot of it is uh, in Russian, but I'm, I'm still working with that. But yeah, anyway, um, Predictions for the deadlift, uh, since Graham pulled out, I can see Brian doing very well. Top three for the deadlift, in my opinion, would be JF in first, Brian in second, and Jerry in third. So, if we go back to Woods 2018, where they did an elevated 18-inch deadlift, uh, JF Karan won that with, I believe, 520 kilos. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how Brian placed in that, but I know it was behind Thor. But um, let's let's see how how Jerry and Brian's hamstrings hold up in this event. That's my thing about Jerry. Jerry could podium. Jerry could place top five, but you know Jerry's hamstrings just weren't the same after his five hundred kilo deadlift attempt in. Um, in, in 2016, but I hope good things for Jerry. Uh, Tom might lose points on that, but he's been beasting it as well. Brian should deadlift 1200 on the 18 inch event. I would love to see that. Well, see, but you know, I would love to see updates on the spreadsheet. Somebody said the uh, spreadsheet updated, let's check. Oh, shit, okay, wow. Thank you, Marcus. Okay, so we have updates for the deadlift event. Let's see. I'm not surprised at some of those. Okay. Looks like a lot of guys stopped at 440. Yeah. Um, if anybody is in Florida right now, what's the heat, what's the uh, humidity and stuff looking like down in Florida right now? I know it's actually sunny there, but what is it like humidity wise? Ivar stopped at 400. Yep. So, Jerry Pritchett with 440. Kevin Ferris with 440, Tom Stolman with 440, JF with 440, Ryan Shaw with 440, and Ivar is with 400. That's a lot of guys to, sh uh, to share points with. I'm actually shocked Brian stopped at 440. I'm actually shocked that JF stopped at 440, because that's a lot of guys to share points with. I'm super curious to see what Luke Richardson pulled in this, though. Like, if we don't have, let's let me try and update it. Let's see. Okay, 
Luke Richardson with 400. I am shocked. Hmm. Does that mean Alexi and Fish are still going at it? Or, hmm. I feel like an addict constantly refreshing to see what's going to happen. Well, 40 for Shaw, he did much more than this at home two weeks ago. Mm. Again, being at home in a controlled environment is definitely different from being outside in the heat. So who knows? And I believe Colin was talking about the bar setup for for the deadlift, I think, was stiffer, I believe. So who knows? Because the whip on the bar definitely helps guys like Adam Bishop. Like if you guys have seen his his 18 inch deadlift on his Insta, like the whip definitely helps some guys more than others. So maybe that affected them. Again, very shocked uh, at Richardson only doing 400. I actually really wanted to see him put up a really big number. How do you guys feel about Luke Richardson? Luke Richardson hype train anybody? Like, say what you will about his Europe Strongest Man. Um, this is his first world. Do I see him taking it? No. Do I see him placing top five? No. And that's not me hating on the guy. Please don't think I'm hating on Luke Richardson. I'm not. It's just that he needs, you know, more experience. I believe this is his fifth international competition. And that, you know, that, he has to have a lot of nerves. Worlds is definitely a different beast from doing the one-day shows. Sorry for being silent. I was just checking some of the stuff right now. Let's see. Yep, still nothing for Bishop and, and Novikov. Yeah, I think... Maybe Richardson has, you know, competition nerves. World is a huge stage. And being in front of the TV crews, the camera crews, you know, it, it's definitely different. I saw it in person, you know, when I was at Worlds last year. They had some of these guys doing their entrances, walking back and forth to the equipment like three and four times because, oh, the lighting wasn't right or the sun was in the wrong direction. And that could definitely, like, fuck with, you know, some of the... the uh, not the most experienced guys so you know maybe maybe that's what's happening to luke 84 in sarasota can't find a dew point i mean 84 is not as bad as it was last year last year it was like 100 with like crazy humidity but that's still really hot still nothing for bishop and alexi Hey guys, thank you for bearing with the live stream and thank you for bearing with this. Again, I, I wish there was at least some footage to, to show, but, you know, if you if you even post like a bit of a snippet, Worlds might actually take it down or strike you. And I've learned my lesson over the summer to, to not mess with some of these bigger corporations. So we just have to rely on spreadsheets and Reddit at the moment. Would there be any updates from the Facebook? Probably not. Like last night, I was actually disappointed that they didn't. Uh oh, what happened here? There we go. No, they are not inside any more Batstick animation. So for the finals, the I think the hurricane has finally passed and has gone away from Bradington. They are going to be outside for the finals. Yeah, there's nothing, no updates or anything. Oop, I don't want to show too much of that in case something happens. <laughs> Have they stopped at 440 or are they going to keep going? I'm not sure at the moment. I'm just going off of the spreadsheet. If anybody could check the Reddit, I'm not sure. I think Bish has done, has also done 520. Let's see.
See, I'm not I'm not sure if they're done or not because somebody on the Reddit said Ivar's look out at 440, Kevin F out at 470, but that's not what I'm seeing on the on the spreadsheet. So I don't know if they're still going or not, and that's just what they have at the moment. Again, bear bear with me. We're all at the mercy of the spreadsheets. And once again, thank you, Esum. Kel Beck just tweeted out 470. 470? Okay. Let's see. Everybody's saying Kel Beck just tweeted out 470. I don't have Twitter, so bear with me, guys. I thought it was worse. Alexi's getting more than 440. I thought he was worse at deadlift. Well, from a standard deadlift, yes. Alexi's not that good at a standard deadlift, but maybe at an elevated deadlift he can be much better, especially if he's using figure eight straps. I mean, look at the monster truck deadlift from 2019. Give us some updates here, people. Yeah, this is an updating right now. So apologies if this isn't accurate at the moment. Because some people are telling me Kevin Ferris has seven, uh, sorry, 470 kilos. So we'll see. Only Brian and Karan can go over 440, I reckon. No, um, definitely Bishop can go over 440 as well. Jerry could probably do over 440. I can see J if if they're still continuing, I can see JF, Jerry, Bishop, and Brian all going over 440 if they have not stopped yet. Yeah, if, if Kale's predictions are I'm sorry, if Kel's tweets are correct and Ferris pulled 470, like, holy shit, we got to watch out for this guy. We have to watch out for Kevin Ferris. He's definitely got a follow from me, that's for sure. Yeah, it's updated with who is out. Okay, let's see. Okay, thank you so much, Marcus. Okay, so Adam Bishop with 470, Alexei Novikov with 470, Jerry Pritchard with 470. Um, there's an asterisk next to Kevin Ferris, I guess if they're trying to confirm Kevin Ferris is 470. Tom Stoltman with 470, JF with 470. Yep, okay, so they're still going up. Okay, got you, okay. No, Ferris failed 470, okay, got you. Thank you. So is asteroids people with failed weights do no or or not? And if Ferris failed 470, what's his highest deadlift? Very surprising for Alexi, man. I, I didn't think he was gonna do that well on that, okay. I would imagine that it means they're going to attempt 470. Okay. Super shocked at Alexi's 470 because in training it didn't look crazy. You know, his deadlift looked very slow off the floor, even in a suit, but maybe he was sandbagging it. Who knows? It's at the bottom. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Asterisk means they're out at the bottom. Uh, okay, so okay, asterisk means they're out at the bottom. I didn't see that. Didn't see that. Appreciate it. Okay, so who's still in it? Adam Bishop, Alexei Novikov, Jerry Pritchett, Tom Stoltman, J. Holy shit! Do y'all see the 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 Keith host for JF? God, I need to stop cursing. I need to stop cursing because YouTube's going to get mad. Okay, and they're making their thumbs touch. I would imagine that it means they're going to 10470 and they're making their thumbs touch the bar with figure eight straps. Jesus.
Again, wish we could see a live stream. I would love to see this going on right now. J.F. Karan currently at 5.09. Lord of mercy. Okay, so the guys who are out currently, Kevin Ferris, Brian Shaw, Ivar Smock Stellas, and Luke Richardson are all out at the moment. So the guys who are still deadlifting, Brian Shaw, Alexei Novikov, Jerry Pritchett, Tom Stoltman, and J.F. Karan. Shit. If that's accurate and Brian Shaw's out, oof, that's, that's really bad. Because he's going to lose a lot of points. Oof. I could definitely see Jerry going over 500. I could see Adam going over 500. I would be shocked if Alexi goes over 500, but stranger things have happened clearly. Oh, I could definitely see Tom going over 500. Brian has done it 470, yeah. So for anybody who's just joining, we're constantly just refreshing the, the spreadsheet created by Reddit user Esum. Um, just seeing what's happening right now. Uh, these, remember, there's no live footage. I'm not associated with Worlds or anybody. I'm just a fan. Uh, but we're just constantly refreshing this spreadsheet. And this is day one of the finals. So today we've had the Giants medley, the 18-inch deadlift, and I believe... We're doing the Hercules hold today. I think that has changed. The Hercules hold was supposed to be Sunday. I think we're doing Hercules hold today. And just so you guys know, even though Mark Felix did not get to the finals, it is confirmed that Mark is getting a chance to do the world record on the Hercules hold. Once again, it is confirmed that Mark Fields will get a chance to attempt the world record on the Hercules hold. And I think that's going to go on later today. Yeah, uh, somebody, uh, Fred Ed said bye bye to well, title number five, was rooting for the dude. Shaw is now in trouble for the podium. If Shaw is out already and finishes mid pack, he can forget number five. Oof. Shaw still has decent events, though. Uh, maybe buy for the title, but I think he could still buy for for the podium. Kent Toss, he's phenomenal at, but he has to look up for guys like Ivar Smok Stellas and Alexei Novikov. Lumen looks Stolman misses five oh nine. Okay, damn. All right. Shaw is out of the deadlift. Shaw missed 470. Is the jump straight from 470 to 509? I'm actually not sure of the jumps. I'm going straight up by the, the spreadsheet. Five oh nine is a bit of a is a bit of an interesting jump. But just so you guys know, I am going to end the stream around uh, maybe 4.20 because supposedly the Facebook live stream will start at 4.30 and I'm not going to uh, freeboot that. I'm not trying to get in trouble for anybody. But I, if you guys like this, I will live stream tomorrow. Let me know. We can all stare at a spreadsheet together. Sauce so chances are under ten percent now. Oof. Like I said, guys, uh, just so you guys know, we're refreshing the the spreadsheet constantly. So what we have right now: Kevin Ferris is out. Tom Stoltman is out. Brian Shaw is out. Uh, Ivar Smock Stellas is out. Luke Richardson is out. And don't forget, Graham Hicks withdrew after the first event due to a torn bicep. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I definitely appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Definitely subscribe. 
Um, after my six months hiatus, I, uh, I am back now and I will be posting videos at least once a week. If there's no competitions, it's mostly history of videos. So we will be going into the history of IFSA. We will be doing a five things you should buy for a Strongman Black Friday. And we're going to take a look at America's Strong... I'm sorry. We're going to be looking at the first ever America's Strongest Man from 1997 next Friday on the channel. Okay, I'm just looking at the stream. Yep. So yeah, constantly refreshing the stream, guys. Oh crap, one black. My bad. Okay, there we go. So again, guys who are still in the deadlift at the moment are Adam Bishop, Alexei Novikov. Jerry Pritchett and JF Karan. Jerry hit 509. Thank you. Was 97 Magnus Samuelson's year? Uh, no, that was the first year Yoko Ahalo won. That was take place in uh, Nevada. Primrose, Nevada is where that competition took place. Okay, just updated. Jerry hit 509 on the deadlift. See, I told you guys he'd go over. Okay, bit of an update. I'm seeing 509 for Novikov. Not sure he hit it or not. So, yeah, those jumps look a bit strange. I'm not, I highly doubt the jump was 400, 470, 509. But we'll see. Maybe they'll talk about it during the uh, the live stream that's going to happen in less than 30 minutes. We'll see. Uh, I will thank you guys for the support. I will be live streaming tomorrow, and we will have more of the results as they come through, and we'll go into uh, detail. He did. Uh, Alexa hit 509, or, yeah? All right. Okay, Novikov hit 509. Perfect. Wow, he's actually really surprised me. He wants this, guys. Like I said, my prediction was JF uh, wins the whole thing. Tom Stolman in second, and Brian Shaw in third. Uh, with Brian falling out of the deadlift uh, and missing 470, that's definitely changed. I can definitely see it now. Novikov for podium, guys. Yeah, I definitely agree. Brian is in big trouble if all these guys are hitting 509. Yeah. This really opens up JF's chances. This opens up Jerry's chances, too. Holy crap. Brian, Brian missing the 470 is crazy. I'm going to cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Listen, I, he has next year. Dry, what is this, Drive for Five Part Four? I'm a Brian fan, by the way. Don't think I'm a hater, but listen. This is JF's time. This is Novikov's time, man. Just some fun trivia facts for you guys. Also, credit to Isam on the Reddit. Novikov is the first Ukrainian in the final since 2004. When Vasil Vedestuk won it. That'd actually be crazy if Vasil won it, though. Oh, sorry, if, if, Novikov, if Novikov wins this whole thing. If Novikov wins this, I think he'll tie for being the youngest, world's strongest man. Because I believe JF, uh, sorry, John Paul Simerson also won his first title at 24. I'm not hating, though. Did I know Novikov was good, so good at the deadlift? Surprisingly, I didn't think he was going to be that good on the deadlift. I thought he was going to come in last, honestly. Uh, there's a lot of top deadlifters here. I'm so shocked at, at Novikov's performance on the deadlift, guys. Um, I believe he was, like, bottom half of the card uh, 
when it came to the deadlift at Wuss last year. And um, he didn't do so hot at the Elephant Bar deadlift this year. So I'm actually very surprised. Mickey, I, I feel you, you know, it's it's uh, now or never for Brian Shaw, but he is getting older. But at the same time, this is his 12th consecutive final. How many guys have the longevity to be in this sport and go into 12 consecutive finals? So if he doesn't win his five, yes, it sucks. But Brian Shaw has a great legacy in this sport. 12 finals, four title wins is still very impressive. And what, Brian Shaw is 37, 38? In a couple of years, he's going to be in the Masters. So I don't see him retiring if he doesn't win. I don't see retiring um, anytime soon, honestly. Like, I think Masters Strongman is going to be lit in the next couple of years. Jerry Pritchett, Mikhail Shivakov, Terry Hollins, uh, Lauren Chalet, if he wants to come back and do, like, full, full competitions. Like, Masters, the Masters scene is going to be crazy in the next couple of years. Hell, I think JF's uh, 37 as well. So, yeah, JF's going to be in the Masters soon, too. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting. But we're also in a new decade. So things are changing. You know, it, this, is, this is a new decade. This is a new breed of strongmen. You know, once Mateus gets better, we have Novikov. We have guys like Ivars, Evan Singleton when he gets better, Rob Kearney when he gets better. Man, there's been a lot of injuries recently. That sucks. This is, like I said, a new breed, Janashia. We have guys who are going to come up, and, like, the next 10 years of strongmen are going to be crazy good as well. There's still be pickup on the old folks. Yeah, Brian will dominate. You know, oh, absolutely, Brian will dominate the Masters. I mean, right now, Z does crazy well in the Masters, so we can see a reunion of Brian versus Big Z in the Masters strongman, and that would be crazy. It would also put, like, I think a bigger spotlight on Masters, um, you know, competition. You picking up on the old folks. Oh, no, Martins is still pretty young. Martins is only 30, but he said he wanted to retire from the sport by, I believe, the age of 33. He definitely wants to win an Arnold. He definitely wants to win another Worlds, and I think he wants to win Wuss. But uh, Martins has already set a time on his strongman career, which I get it understandable, respectable. I just think Novikov spent some time on the hyperbolic time chamber this year. That's why he's been so quiet. Absolutely. I, I definitely agree with you, Anti Castro. Um, remember last year, Novikov did like 20 competitions. Like, you know, all those competitions with, um, in, within Ukraine. He did uh, a couple competitions in Ultimate Strongman for Glenn Ross. He did the Arnolds. He did Worlds. Last year, he was beasting it. This year, because of COVID, you know, he finally had time to rest and chill out and, you know, not compete as, as much as he did last year, which I think did wonders for him. Also, you know, I think he was just mad from last year not making the finals. And that, you know, definitely got him, you know, definitely uh, lit a fire under him. I flew to Dubai last year for Wush. It was great. I definitely wanted to fly out for Wush Dubai this year, but COVID. So, yeah, I, I, I had big plans for, for 2020. Uh, I, I was going to fly out for World's Strongest Man when it took place in May for my birthday, but that didn't happen. Um, and I wanted to fly out to Dubai for Wush in October, but that didn't happen. And I, and I did want to see Giants Live North America, but again, that didn't happen. Hopefully, we can get full competitions with crowds in 2021. Uh, do I see Britons happening with a crowd? No. Um, Arnold with a crowd? Maybe. You know, hopefully hopefully things can get back to normal by, by, by mid-year next year. Yeah, that rest turned now into the shooting over. Yeah. 
Was it good to watch it live as a fan? Was it good to watch Worlds live as a fan? Absolutely not. No. Uh, I have a video on my YouTube from last year. It's called um, World's Strongest Man Through the Eyes of the Spectators, uh, where I interviewed some fans there. Um, <laughs> it was an experience, you know, and, it, you know, experiences are what you make it. Um, I had a f fun time. There were interesting things that happened. Um, I got to hang out with some of the strong men on the beach, so that was actually really cool. Um, you know, I got to take pictures like Mannix for Magnuson. I saw Kaz. Uh, that's why I'm a big fan of Ivar's. Ivar's was like super approachable during Worlds last year. Evan Singleton, even though he didn't compete last year, was also super approachable and like super nice. These guys are some of the nicest people I've ever met. JF as well. Um, but but Worlds is a lot of waiting around, you know. Uh, it was all the waiting around in the hot sun. I got sunburnt like crazy. I was like three shades darker by the last day. <laughs> um, that's why they don't do it live. I get it. But at the same time, Worlds needs to wake up and get into, you know, be born into this decade. Um, you could say, oh, they don't shoot Worlds live because of the wait time. Well, Arnold has wait times in between, and Rogue handles that perfectly. You know, they'll have their event. You know, they'll, they'll okay, for example, say the Arnolds will say uh, live stream the deadlift in the morning. They have a start time. The, uh, the deadlift finishes, and then they will put up on screen, it's like, hey, return back at this time, at, say, 5 o'clock in the evening to see the next event. That's what Worlds needs to do. We understand as fans that there is long wait times between events and setting up events. They just need, you know, they just need to do something. It's annoying. Will it change? Probably not. I mean, look, it took a whole global pandemic for them just to give us behind the scenes footage and have this taking place indoors for once. So do I think worlds are going to change? Absolutely not. It's, it's definitely IMG. So, yeah. What I missed since Brian was out at 470. Nothing yet. Uh, I just updated the spreadsheet. Nothing new. So guys who successfully hit 509, Adam Bishop, Alexei Novikov, Jerry Pritchett, and JF Karan. So we have four guys who are still in this. Who do I see? I don't know what the jumps are. I would imagine the next jump is probably 515 or 520. Again, I don't I don't know if that's um, confirmed or not. I'm just speculating that would be the most realistic choice of the next jump. Tom is out. Okay, damn. Yep, Tom out. He missed 509. Damn. Marcus, where are you seeing these updates? Is it Reddit? Damn, Tom's out. How is Luke so low? How is Luke so low on deadlift? Exactly. I was actually shocked that Luke's very low on deadlift. Um, have we seen Luke Richardson do a lot of elevated deadlifts? I know he did one at Giants Live, but that bar is a bit different. Maybe it's the whip on the bar that like screwed him up. I'm not sure. Well, you know. Comp nerves, who knows? Spreadsheet, yep. Yeah. I mean, even though Tom's out, uh, that's still good points for Tom. Tom's ahead of Brian, so that's still good points for Tom. So yeah, in a couple minutes, I am going to cut the stream to go and watch their Facebook live stream and see what information they can give us. Hopefully we get some information on the loading race and the, uh, the deadlift. Um, hopefully they go into detail about what the jumps were. Max prep two days ago. Richardson did a max lift th two days ago? Jesus. Marshall has been messing around with elevated deadlift. I don't know why he messed up. That's a good point. Yeah, but 
Again, training is different from competition. I'm not going to say it's nervous for Brian. He's a veteran. This is his 12th final. Maybe it's the humidity getting to him. Who knows? Maybe there's a bit of a hamstring problem. Who knows? Maybe an old injury is coming back to haunt Brian. But he, I think he overthinks things too much. I think ever since he screwed up his hamstring at the Arnold Classic in 2019, he's just been over precautious. Yeah. Like I said, um, Brian could be out of contention, but it's only the first two events. We still have four events to go, but it's looking very good for Jerry Pritchett, very good for Lexi Novikov, and J.F. Caron. Tom Stolman definitely still in it, but I'm sticking with J.F. winning this whole thing, guys. But yeah, I'm going to do one more final refresh. Okay, so that's my final refresh right now. This is all we have at the moment. Currently, the guys that are still in the deadlift are Adam Bishop, Alexei Novikov, Jerry Pritchett, and J.F. Caron. They have all successfully hit 509. Guys who have been eliminated from the deadlift are Kevin Ferris, Tom Stoltman, Brian Shar, sorry, Ivar Smokstelis, and Luke Richardson. Tom Stoltman failed 509. Kevin Ferris failed 470. I believe Brian Shaw also failed 470. And Ivar Smokstelis and Luke Richardson, I believe, hit 400 kilos each. And finally, Graham Hicks unfortunately had to withdraw after the first event as he had torn his bicep during the Giants medley. But yeah, that's it for now, guys. I'm going to end the live stream. Thank you all for sticking with me. Tune in tomorrow. Uh, I'll post like a, a reminder to, uh, to know when we're going to go live. But yeah, that's it for now. I'm going to go and watch the Facebook live stream that's supposedly starting in 10 minutes. So I will have an update for you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys for sticking around for the live stream. Remember, check the Strongman Reddit. Uh, check the World Strongest Man unofficial spreadsheet. Credit to Reddit user Esum. And just keep checking on Facebook, Instagram, um, Starting Strongman, World Strongest Fan for updates. And let's see what happens. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'm going to end this. Have a good rest of your evening, guys.